the course of the last three videos, we've introduced you to your Omnia unit, shown you how to connect to your DUT, set up your tests, run them, and use the Omnia in tandem with our scanners. In this fourth video, we're going to run through an advanced testing application, taking all of the knowledge from the first three videos and putting them into one. It's highly recommended that you watch the first three videos before watching video four. For this application, a customer needs to run a full series of safety tests. The customer will be running the sequence to test their product to the IEC slash UL 60601-1 third edition standard for medical devices. For this example, the end user needs to run the test sequence outlined on the unit. I've already pre-programmed in a file named medical and as you can see I've added a ground bond and two high pot tests and I'd like to briefly cover those two tests. Per the medical device standard, it's a 25 amp test. The voltage drop shall not be greater than 6 volts with a high limit of 100 milliohms, no low limit, a dwell time of 10 seconds or enough time to obtain a meaningful reading, and I've already offset my lead resistance at 20 milliohms. I don't need to do any multipoint tests, so I haven't set any of the scanner channels, and I am doing this test at 60 hertz. For the first AC high pot test, it's going to test from line neutral shorted, or mains, back to the chassis point. So it's a simple 1500 volt test with a 10 milliamp high limit, a 5 second ramp up, a 60 second dwell, and a 5 second ramp down. Once again, since I'm using the adapter box and just testing the mains, I don't need to set any scanner channels as of yet. The second high pot test is where things change. This high pot test I need to test the insulation barrier between patient lead 1 and patient lead 2. This is a strong insulation barrier, so it's a much higher high pot test, 4000 volts with a 10 milliamp high limit. Same timers, but as you can see now, with patient lead 1 connected to channel 3 and patient lead 2 connected to channel 4, I will be testing between patient lead 1 and patient lead 2 with this test. First. Let's go over the interconnections between the Omnia, scanner, and then the device under test. As you can see, we have the scanner bus cable here so that the Omnia can communicate with the slave scanner. High current is being routed directly from the current port on the Omnia to the current terminal on the scanner. Same with the return, is on the return port of the Omnia coming up to the return terminal on the scanner. And finally, we're routing high voltage from the HV port on the Omnia, shown here, up to the HV port on the scanner. This is going to allow for any type of ground bound continuity or high voltage testing directly to these scanner channels. Additionally, as you can see, we have our adapter box and case connections. And finally, we have our probe high and probe low. Since we're doing patient leakage testing, these are important. I have probe high connected from the probe high terminal on the Omnia up to channel one on the scanner and probe low from the probe low port on the Omnia to channel 2 on the scanner. As you'll see in the next set of connections to the DUT, channel 3 will be connected to patient lead 1 and channel 4 will be connected to patient lead 2. Next, we're going to connect up to the DUT from the Omnia and the scanners. First, I'm simply going to plug the line cord of the DUT into the adapter box of the Omnia. What this is going to allow for is the mains high pot ground bond, and line leakage tests. Next, I need a return path, so I'm going to connect the case lead to the grounding wire on the DUT's chassis. This is going to provide a return path for our high pot ground bond tests. Finally, I need to connect the patient leads to the scanner channels. First, scanner channel 3, I'm going to connect to patient lead 1. And then finally, scanner channel 4 is going to connect directly to patient lead 2. So to finish up this testing sequence, we need to add a series of line leakage tests. As you can see, we already have the ground bond and the two high pot tests. Then we're going to install a series of earth leakage tests, followed by a series of patient general leakage tests, which basically means measuring leakage from the patient lead back to the system reference. And then we're going to finish up with what's known as a patient auxiliary testing, which is patient lead to patient lead leakage. 
Once again, as we mentioned before, there are two patient leads on this particular DUT, so we're going to connect those via the scanner and run our leakage tests. First, let's start with the earth leakage test. So I'll hit line leakage, and now I need to set my parameters to match up with the 60601 standard. First of all, I'm going to start with normal conditions, which means a closed ground, normal polarity, or as you can see here, reverse off, and closed ground. Per the 60601 standard, the leakage high limit for normal conditions is 5,000 microamps. Leakage low, I'm going to leave alone for the time being, and I'm also going to give myself a voltage window. Per the 60601 standard, I need to run the product at 110% mains voltage. Since I'm dealing with a 120 volt product here, I'm going to be driving it with 132 volts to meet with the standard. As a result, I want to set a window to make sure I don't go too far outside the 132 volt mark. So I'm going to set my high limit at 134, so giving it plus 2, and I'll set my low limit at 130. This ensures that should I stray outside that window, the test will fail and give me an indication that the voltage either went high or low. Next, I need to set my dwell time and my delay time. I'm going to set a 10 second delay time because this product needs about 10 seconds to boot up before I'm going to get a stable reading. But I can leave my dwell time or the actual test time at 0.5 seconds. I'm not going to run an offset for this test. I am going to change the measuring device because we need the measuring device to match up with the 60601 standard, which I have here. My probe configuration for an earth leakage test needs to be ground aligned, which it is here, and as you can see, the measuring device is placed between the ground and line conductors. Additionally, I'm going to set a couple other parameters. First off, I'm going to keep continuous on. This is Associated Research Inc's active link function, which basically allows the device to remain powered up in between line leakage steps. Since we are using an 8257, I can also set the internal source to drive the product. As I mentioned before, I'm going to set it to 132 volts or 110% mains voltage, frequency 60 hertz, and I'm going to keep the output with a floating neutral. So that completes my earth leakage test. Hitting exit is going to take me back to the setup test window and we can see I have the earth leakage test there. So we just set up the earth leakage test with normal conditions. Now we need to add some fault conditions. Now for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to add all eight combinations for eight earth leakage tests. We'll do a few and these could well be added later. So now that we're doing single fault conditions, we need to choose a fault. In this case, I'm going to choose an open neutral. And as you can see, when I do that, the relay internally on the neutral switch is going to open up. The one other thing I need to change is my leakage high limit. Per the standard, once there's a single fault condition, the high limit actually increases to 10,000 microamps. Additionally, since I have continuous on, I don't need this 10 second boot up time again. I simply need a little bit of time to allow the product to keep going and then have it take a measurement with the dwell time. So this is all I would need to do for this single fault condition because all of my other parameters remain the same. We'll add one more with an open ground. So I'm going to close the neutral once again and then open the ground keeping the same parameters. And then finally, I'll finish off with a closed ground, but reverse polarity. Now I well could add four other steps to cover every other condition, but for the purposes of this demo, we're going to move on to the probe test. Now that the earth leakage tests are set, we're going to be running our patient general tests using our probes. So a few parameters need to change here. First off, the leakage high limit. For touch current or patient leakage current, for normal conditions, the high limit is 100 microamps. I'm going to keep my voltage windows and my dwell and delay time. Make sure I'm in normal conditions. 
that I have the proper measuring device, but I do need to change my probe configuration. Before we were doing earth leakage for ground to line. Now we're actually going to be connecting to the patient lead via Pearl Pi, which is attached to the scanner. So that will place the measuring device between the patient lead and our system reference. Additionally, since Pearl Pi is connected to the scanner as well as the patient lead, I need to set the scanner channels. If you'll recall from our rear panel connections, Pearl Pi is set to channel 1, and patient lead 1 is on channel 3. We want to short those together. So I'm going to set channel 1 and channel 3 both high to short them, which will connect Pearl Pi directly to patient lead 1. I don't need to change any of the rest of my parameters, and I now have that first patient leakage test set. Alright, now we have that first patient leakage test completed. For the purposes of this demo, I'm only going to add one more. As I mentioned before, I could do eight to cover all combinations, and all you need to do is cover all fault conditions. I'm just going to add another one with a single fault condition to give you the idea. So we'll do add line leakage. Once again, what I'll do for this one is an open ground condition. So this will be our fault condition for this example. The only other thing I need to change here is my leakage high limit. For single fault conditions, it goes from 100 to 500 microamps. Additionally, I do need to set my scanner just as I did before. We're still dealing with patient lead 1, so I'm setting 1 and 3 both high. So we just set a couple tests for patient 1 patient leakage. Now let's do a couple for patient lead 2 to give you an idea how you do that. It's pretty much the same thing we did for patient lead 1. Once again, we're going to start with normal conditions so my leakage high limit goes back to 100 microamps and I need to make sure that I have my normal conditions set. I have ProPi align, the proper measuring device, normal conditions, now all I need to do is set the scanner. Once again, this time we're going to be dealing with patient lead 2. So patient lead 2 is connected to channel 4. So I'll set channel 4 high, and Pearl Pi is still on channel 1, so channel 1 high. So all I did was shift where I'm connecting Pearl Pi, which is if you were doing manually, you would do the same thing with the clip leads. So I can see here my channel set. Next, we'll add one more with a fault condition. We'll open the neutral and make sure that my high limit gets changed to 500 microamps for single fault conditions. And then finally, go ahead and set the scanner channels. We've now covered patient leads one and two. We're going to end this sequence with the patient auxiliary tests, which basically means we're testing leakage from patient lead 1 to patient lead 2. That being said, we need to change our parameters. First of all, we need our probe configuration to change. Since we're going lead to lead, we're going to change from probe high to line to probe high to probe low. I'm going to set this back to normal conditions, just as I did with the first test and the other ones. That being said, I need to change my high limit once again. All of my other windows can say the same. Now I need to set the scanner channels. This time, we are going from probe high to probe low. So first, we want to connect probe high, which once again is channel 1, to patient lead 1, which is channel 3, just as we did in the previous series. This time, however, we need to bring probe low into the mix. If you recall from the setup, probe low is on channel 2, so I will set channel 2 low and connect that to patient lead 2, which is channel 4. So, once again, probe high and channel lead 1 are shorted. Probe low and patient lead 2 are shorted, so we're testing from patient lead 1 to patient lead 2. Finally, we'll do one of these same tests with a single fault condition. Once again, I'm going to change the high limit now that we're going to be doing a single fault condition. Everything else will remain the same, and I'll set my scanners, just as I did before.
you'll notice that all of the other steps are gone. All that happened is we moved to the next page. So if you want to see the parameters on the other steps, simply scroll up. This completes our test sequence. So I'm going to hit enter twice to save the changes. This will take us to the perform test screen. Now we're going to run the test sequence and look at the results. Now we can look at the results. As we can see, we passed our ground bond test at 25 amps of current at just under 100 milliohms. Mains AC high pot at a little over 1 milliamp of leakage current. Patient lead high pot at about 260 microamps. Earth leakage test under normal conditions with pretty much no leakage. With an open neutral with almost no leakage. Now we have an open ground, and as you can see, since the measuring device is not shorted out any longer, we're actually getting a higher value, about 58 microamps, but still well within limits. And this follows for the rest of the leakage tests. In this video, we went over an advanced testing application. This should give you all the knowledge you need to now use your unit. In the final video, video 5, we're going to show you what not to do with your Omnia unit.